Bullseye with Jesse Thorne is a production of MaximumFun.org and is distributed by NPR. It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. (laughs) Artists, musicians, filmmakers, the people who make stuff are often inspired by what they see or hear. And sometimes something so great they tell us they wish they'd made it themselves. It happens so often, we made a segment about it. It's called I Wish I'd Made That. And today, you're going to hear from the one and only Nick Offerman. Hello, this is Nick Offerman, and I am an actor and writer and woodworker. You might remember him as the lovable Ron Swanson on Parks and Recreation. He's also one of the hosts of the reality competition show Making It, alongside Amy Poehler. It's sort of like the Great British Bake Off with... Uh, pipe cleaners and table saws instead of fondant. He's also a comic. He is traveling our great nation and the world with his Gibson guitar for his new show, All Rise. It's comedy and music and the very particular perspective of one Nick Offerman. When we asked him if there was any TV show or movie or album that he wished he'd made, Nick said he leaves that stuff to the professionals. He decided to channel his woodworking roots and tell us about the greatest guitar he's ever held in his hands, the Gibson J200. Take it away, Nick. I, I'm not clever enough to uh, to make TV or films. I have tried, and that's how I learned that I'm not clever enough. So I depend on much greater brains than my own uh, for those mediums. But in the woodworking shop, uh, I can take a swing at challenging projects. And so I chose, uh, once, once I switched over to woodworking, I immediately thought, when I first saw the Gibson J200 guitar, also known as the Jumbo or the Super Jumbo, I wish I had made that. This is uh, a it has, it has a beautiful booming bass, but also a bright top end. I was teaching myself uh, guitar. My wife is an incredible singer and musician, and I had a dream that one day maybe we could perform together. And uh, she had a birthday party to which she invited Patty Griffin to come play in our yard. And Patty, thankfully, was a fan of Will and Grace, so she agreed. She came and played a handful of songs on this vintage Gibson J200. And she had a lot to do with it, obviously. She's, she's wonderfully elfin. She, you know, is um, just magical. And her voice is beautiful, her songs are incredible, and her guitar playing is exquisite. You can't really have her. But you can hold it for a time. And so I just was absolutely uh, bewitched by her playing, and I said, I gotta find out what that guitar is and get me one. I did a lot of homework and discovered, of course, that I had chosen the most expensive possible vintage guitar (laughs) to chase down. This is probably 10, 12 years ago, anywhere in LA or New York or Chicago or Nashville or Austin, at any given time, you could find two or three of these exquisite top of the line vintage guitars and they were running 10 to $12,000. So around the time, uh, you know, obviously that immediately disqualified them from my consideration. Then I got my job on Parks and Rec, and a couple years in, it looked like the show might keep going a little bit, and I said, oh, let me go try and play one of these. And I went into the vintage guitar shop, and I played one, went back in the little room, and when I heard myself play it, it sounded an awful lot like me playing my own crappy guitar. And I realized, oh, I... (laughs) I have no business spending $12,000 on a guitar on which I'll sound as mediocre as I will on any guitar. And I was sitting there playing the expensive, beautiful J200, 
And I thought, oh, I'm not going to buy one of these. I'm going to make one. Because if I'm going to sound mediocre, might as well have the rich story of making one myself. We'll have more from Nick Offerman in a minute. Stay with us. It's Bullseye for MaximumFun.org and NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Smart Water. Smart Water is for the curious drinkers, the ones who are always looking for ways to make things a little better. That's why Smart Water created two new ways to hydrate, Smart Water Alkaline with 9 plus pH and Smart Water Antioxidant with added selenium. And now you can order Smart Water by saying, Alexa, order Smart Water. Smart Water, that's pretty smart. It might be hard to pin down what makes a friendship really work. I feel like we're like the Michael Jordan of friendships. Like, you can't ask Jordan. (laughs) You can't ask Jordan how he does what he does. He's a freak of nature. But clearly, some people know how to do it. Check out Life Kit's new guide from NPR on navigating the highs and lows of friendship or subscribe to Life Kit All Guides for all of our episodes all in one place. Hi, I'm Dave Hill from Show Business. And while I'm not from Canada, My grandfather Clarence Vincent Blake Sr. was, and he wouldn't shut up about it. My grandfather moved on to that great penalty box in the sky way back in the 80s. Still, all these years later, I can't help but wonder, what do we really know about Canada and its people? Which is why my friend Chris Gersbeck and I decided to make So, You're Canadian. Brand new podcast from the Maximum Fun Network, on which I attempt to get to know our neighbors to the north, one Canadian at a time. Coming to Maximum Fun, August 27th. And I'm not sorry. It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. Nick Offerman is here for our segment, I Wish I'd Made That, which this time around we might call, I Actually Tried to Make That. Here's Nick. I got one book all about how to build uh, a guitar, including plans for a J200. And at the end of the book, everything in the book uh, was was a no-brainer. If you've built wooden boats, you're like, okay, yeah, steam bending, got that, hand shaping the neck, putting, installing the frets and the, the tuning machines. That was new territory, but not insurmountable. And then you get to the end of the book and it says, the catch about an acoustic guitar is you want to make it lightweight enough, this sort of beautifully shaved and toned vessel, so that when you put the strings on, it vibrates in the most delightful, sonorous manner. So you, you can't leave it too thick. It can't be too heavy duty. Otherwise, you might as well put strings on a two by six. But if you shave it a little too, uh, a little too thinly, when you tighten up the, the six steel strings, it applies about 200 pounds of pull on this shell of wood you've created. And so, if you've gotten it a little too right, then the whole thing explodes. And that's the end of the book. And you know, I was like, well, that's terrifying. Uh, I imagine you just, you've talked 99% of potential luthiers out of taking a shot at it. So, so what do I do? I go out and get another book. And then I got a third book. And each book ended the same way. They all said that. They're like, you got to shave it just enough because if you shave it too much, it'll explode. So after three books, I said, I'm, I'm daunted. But what about a ukulele? A ukulele has plastic strings. It's not nearly the uh, the pressure that's on a guitar. And so... I figured out how to build a ukulele, and uh, I built my first one, which I brought in here. It's a a soprano ukulele, and it's built entirely of mahogany to sort of match the aesthetic of the old Martin ukuleles. And, you know, it's got uh, some some picadillos. Uh, The frets especially required a finesse that I'm still learning. Um, So the frets are pretty crappy, but all in all... Sounds like a ukulele, and I wrote a song called the Ukulele Song, and I wrote the song first so that I would have to, I had to make myself get started because it was really scary to try an instrument. But you know, like anything, I made mistakes, and uh, I mean, I, I've made mistakes building tables, and that's a lot less difficult. 
the thing is, the mistakes are important because if you're going to become exquisite, if you're going to become exceptional at anything, you're never going to just do it on your first try. It means you're going to screw, you're going to ruin a lot of wood before you make a, a trophy piece. So I made this ukulele. I toured with it, uh, performing my ukulele song. They made a real nice video of it at the Fayetteville Roots Festival. I love beer and whiskey, perhaps a bit too much. Given the chance, I'd fall off a bar stool daily to keep me out of the pub and also out of Dutch. I make things like this soprano ukulele. I've paddled a canoe that I built across a river and playing a, a ukulele that I made and making an audience laugh with my song. Um, both of them feel sort of equally super heroic. If, if you're in touch with an elemental part of the human capacity, like, oh, if the goes down and society gets wiped out, I am able to make a tree into a floating vessel that will get us to Catalina and so we can still have a wine mixer even after the apocalypse. Why can't we all get along for a minute? Everybody's all Palestinian or Israeli. If we'll just head down to the shop and enjoy the tools in it, we can build a pacifying ukulele. Nick Offerman. He's touring his new show, All Rise, across this great nation this summer and fall. You can see the guitar in person if you go to one of the shows. I went to one here in Los Angeles. I had a good old time. You don't need to be a master craftsperson to appreciate the beauty of that big, fat guitar. All the screens in the world just won't let me be. Life is way too Instagrammy and emaily. So I went to my shop, milled some fine mahogany, and I built this mother-loving ukulele. Ukulele, 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 ukulele. We've come to the end of another episode of Bullseye. Bullseye produced at MaximumFun.org World Headquarters overlooking MacArthur Park in beautiful Los Angeles, California, where this week the lake at the park was refilled. Yeah, there's a giant water cannon that shoots water into the lake. It's great. Great. Every time it happens, it's a thrill. <laughs> Uh, anyway, show is produced by Speaking Into Microphones. Our producer is Kevin Ferguson. He's away. Raghu Manavalan is filling in for him, wearing a floral hat today. Jesus Ambrosio is our associate producer. We get help from Casey O'Brien. Our production fellow is Jordan Cowling. Jordan, uh, it turns out, hates the movie The Godfather, listed by many as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, film ever made. Um, she watched it for the first time recently and thought it was super boring. It's also her birthday this week, so happy birthday to Jordan. Our interstitial music is by DJW, also known as Dan Wally. Thanks to Dan. Don't know how he feels about The Godfather. Probably likes it. Most people do. Our theme song is Huddle Formation by The Go Team. Thanks to them and Memphis Industries, their record label, for letting us use it. And before you go, did you know that we've got 20 years of Bullseye in the can? Okay, not quite 20. It's like 18 or 19 years of Bullseye in the can. And almost all of it is up on the internet, so uh, you can listen to, you know, you want to listen to uh, Brian Posehn and Steve Agee talk about the Sarah Silverman program? You can do that. They were great on that show, and they were they're, they're sweet guys. Uh, you want to hear Ted Leo perform uh, songs live in my apartment when I used to record the show in my apartment? You can do that. Uh, you can find all our past stuff at our website, Maximum Fun. Uh, you can also find uh, years worth on YouTube to search for Bullseye with Jesse Thorne. And uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Search for Bullseye with Jesse Thorne. We're at Bullseye on Twitter. I think that's about it. Just remember, all great radio shows have a signature sign off. Bullseye with Jesse Thorne is a production of MaximumFun.org and is distributed by NPR.